The speaker you are listening to is Imam Muhammad Afi. Imam Afi is the leader of Muslims in the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area. He previously led the early and Jumu'ah prayers inside the Islamic Center. His speeches were inspiring, revolutionary, and thought-provoking, which eventually irritated and threatened the Middle East ambassadors who controlled the masjid. Finally, the Imam, his family, and other Muslims faithful to the cause of Islam were forced out into the street. This khutbah originates from the sidewalk across the street from the Islamic Center, currently under sea. <laughs> الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير أشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين يا أيها النبي إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا وبشر المؤمنين بأن لهم من الله فضلا كبيرا ولا تطع الكافرين والمنافقين ودع أذاهم وتوكل على الله وكفى بالله وكيلا من أطاع الرسول فقد أطاع الله وما أرسلناك عليهم حفيظا أما بعد Muslims of commitment and faith During this month of Ramadan Allah جل وعلا Exalted and Almighty says, وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون and if my subjects and servants question you concerning me I indeed am near to them I respond to those who solicit me so they should call upon me so that they may reach a level of maturity, of understanding. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٍ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ This ayah in 
the context of the Quran has been placed almost in the dead center of the ayat that speak about fasting, which begin with Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon and which end with wala ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bilbaatil wa tudilu biha ila al-hukkam lita'kulu fariqan min amwal al-nas bil-ithm wa antum ta'lamun in the middle of this discourse on ramadan on fasting on denial Allah presents us with this particular area. And if, Allah is saying, and if my servants query you concerning me, then I am near to them. The first observation concerning the positioning of this area is that Allah wanted to say to us while we are fasting that He is close to us. How many moments in life does a person contemplate the idea that where is God? If there is a God, He would have responded to me. If there was a God, He would have shown more compassion to us. If there was a God, He would have acted in a more forthcoming manner. These are questions that cross the mind of individuals, human beings, whether they are Muslims or whether they are not Muslims. But Allah who created us and knows how we respond and how we react presented us with this fact while we are fasting at a time when we purge our body of its physical toxins and we purge our mind of its mental toxins and we purge our soul of its spiritual toxins and when we do so we feel more intimate with Allah and Allah knows that this feeling will touch base with us during this month of Ramadan. And that is why He said to us during this month of Ramadan, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If we take a look at the individual position of a Muslim, whatever condition you are in, in your personal life, or whether we take a look at the broad existence of 1.3 billion Muslims in the world, whatever condition we are looking at, sometimes the question knocks on our mind. Why are we left up to this plight or this or that predicament? Why doesn't Allah come to help us when we are encountering hard times as an individual, as a family, as a community, as a society, as a congregation, as a collective presence in this world? There are many times when this question entertains our feelings. Look at the plight of the Muslims in such areas as the Balkans, the Muslims in the Caucasus, the Muslims in North Africa, the Muslims in the Nile Valley, the Muslims in the Middle East, the Muslims in Central Asia. It's only a thinking mind that would pose the question then if we are so obedient 
here to Allah? But why isn't Allah here? And Allah responds to this question not when your stomach is full. Allah doesn't respond to this question when you are an object of class materialism. Allah responds to this question when you are ready to receive his response. And Allah knew that if you were observing, Allah knows that if you are observing Ramadan correctly, then you will be ready for his answer. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ For those who persist in posing this type of question, when they look at the condition of the Muslims, then Allah is responding, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am nearby. I am at a close proximity. Allah says in another ayah, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We are closer to him, this human individual, than his jugular vein. But this is a fact because, that because of the conditions and the circumstances around seems like a remote one. But in this month of Ramadan, Allah wants you and I and everyone to understand that He is nearby. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I will respond to any da'i once he calls upon me. Anyone who approaches me with a sincere demand or an honest request, then I will be there to respond to that request and demand. And that response doesn't necessarily mean a detectable response. Something that you will immediately, immediately notice with your senses. Because Allah is not a human being. If we say on this occasion and during these days that we want those oppressive powers to expire. This can be expressed in many languages and in many phrases. But when we request from Allah that that be the case, how do you think that is going to come about? Is it going to come about in an action similar to that of Musa when Pharaoh was trailing him and the sea parted and then the Pharaoh and his administration drowned? Or is the response going to be that Allah will approach these types of dictators in his own way? And take a further look at the insight and the penetrating qualities of Ramadan. Take a look at what is happening to these who are doing or engineering the catastrophes, at least on the surface of it, what appears to be like catastrophes concerning Muslims in this world. What is happening to them? One immediate issue that anyone can notice is if they have a change of climate, they are having difficulties coping with it. Unlike what they have experienced before. For the first time in the past month, the United States federal government shut down. Where has this happened before? And for the first time in history, the United States government was and has been involved in atrocities against the Muslims in this world. So there is a first time this and a first time that. And the Muslims approach Allah with their requests, with their demands. وَإِلَى سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي And so this should be an incentive for us to call upon Allah. This 
will not cause us to abandon our course. Rather, it will solidify us on our path towards Allah. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Through this process and in this manner we gain our mature existence in this world. We will no longer react to immediate events. The total information is in the possession of Allah. It's not in the possession of some intelligence agency or an overarching of intelligence agencies. They have a partial amount of information. The overall pool of information is in the possession of Allah. And if He wills, He will take them on at His appointed time and at His appointed location. And in that process, we continue in our dedication and in our devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for these surface appearances, such as genocide in the Balkans, such as a brutal Russian military campaign to which the government in this country is praying absence. The whole issue doesn't exist to them. But the whole issue exists to Allah. And He is more knowledgeable of the intricacies of these affairs far beyond the type of information that they surface with from time to time. During this month of Ramadan, as we are involved in this process of denial with moderation, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ As we are involved in this, we are sure and we are confident that Allah is responding to the Muslims within these types of conditions. He's not responding to some idle Muslim who is withdrawn from reality and who is isolated from other Muslims and who is cut off from current events, much less those who claim to be Muslims but who are involved on the other side of the issue, who are participating in trying to undermine this growing and vital and vibrating Islamic reality that emerges from those committed Muslims who are steeped in Ramadan, schooled in Ramadan, and dedicated to this course of Ramadan, who listen to Allah when He says to them, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَادٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ The calls and the questions that Allah is looking for are those that come from the quarters, the oppressed quarters of humanity, the oppressed quarters of the Islamic condition. Any cries that emerge from that condition, any appeals that are voiced from within that condition, there is where Allah is to be located. I am nearby. I am close to them. So we understand from this, for those who are observing this month of Ramadan, where there is pressure placed upon them, 
And the brothers, we may be here, there are a few inches of snow around, but there are other brothers of ours who are living in mountains where there are more than a few inches of snow, where the air is frigid, where physical conditions are life-threatening. And not only that, where there is a military machine that is at work against them. They are fasting in this month of Ramadan and they read this same ayah. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Our complementation of theirs is the least that we can afford is to stand a position in a position that will represent their cause that will be on the course to Allah fi sabilillah with this we make this connection between us and the rest of those whose future by Allah's promise is theirs وَعَدَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And part of this deputy position in this world is to experience these types of times. Our compensation for not being in that front line position is that Allah who hears us
rate and try to work that down during this month. It does not have to be done in any radical sense. It can be done gradually. But that is required to integrate into the divine reality and the meanings that unfold during this month. Another explanation for the ayah Shahru Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. So the descending of the Quran or the assimilation of its meanings is a component of this month of Ramadan once we observe the restraining order of Allah from indulging in our appetites by denying our desires their full extent we open up a new avenue into understanding Allah's meanings and Allah's words so that after we spend these weeks we have a better understanding of how Allah is involved in our efforts and in the world around. We are no longer living within a phobia of existence. We live in a cosmic order of unlimited extensions in which Allah is the primary caretaker. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. This هدى and the بينات, the evidence of this هدى, will go undetected if you don't make a sincere effort at trimming your desires, not eliminating them, at trimming them to gain an insight into the meanings of Allah's work in your life and in existence around you. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وآل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعيما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة
shoes would cause you some uh, health irregu irregularities, you may play with your shoes off.
نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Yeah. 